powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Benavuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Obwena. This is the day the Lord has made, we we'll rejoice and be glad. I want to appreciate everyone that is viewing the broadcast, wherever you're watching from. It's always a joy to bring forth the engrafted word of God to you. And today we'll be sharing in the days of His power. We are in the days of the manifestation of the Spirit. We are in the days where the Spirit of God is in operation, willing to manifest the power of God, willing to flow through us, and willing to use us to carry out a heaven agenda. These are the days of His power. Jesus was was sharing, he said, Behold, I give unto you power. It is the ability to cause change. Power is the ability to bring change, to bring transformation, to bring liberty. In Romans 8, 11, he said, If the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he said he will quicken your mortal body. The Spirit of God is the source of power. The Spirit of God, there is no powerless Christian. There is no Christian on the face of the earth today that is powerless. But we have Christians today who are ignorant of the power. There is no powerless Christian. There is no believer in the body of Christ that is powerless. There is no child of God that is powerless. But the problem has been people's inability to walk in the revelation of who they are in Christ. When we walk in the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus, nothing can be impossible to us because by that revelation, we can release the power of God that is within us. If you are born again, you have the power of God. You are carrying the power of God. But the manifestation of that power is directly related to your level of understanding about the things of the Spirit. The manifestation of the power is directly related to your understanding about the things of the Spirit. If I don't have an understanding about the things of the Spirit, yes, I have the power of God, but I can manifest it. I can manifest it. In Acts chapter 3, we saw Peter and John was going to the temple during the hour of prayer, and they saw this man at the beautiful gate. And when they saw him at the beautiful gate, the man was expecting to receive um, help, something from them, that he could use to survive or sustain himself. But Peter looked at him and said, Save and go, none I have. But such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You see, Peter was walking in the revelation of the power of God that he was that was available in his life. He knew that the power of God is in his life. So he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He recognized that he was a power carrier. He never said, I'm powerless. 
There is no powerless Christian today. We only have Christians who are not functioning in the consciousness of the power of God. The Bible said in Colossians 1.27, a, a, a portion of it there said, it said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, if Christ 20... Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, let's look at verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, it said, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. He said, Christ is the power of God, and Christ is the wisdom of God. So, if I want to see the power of God, if I focus on the Christ in me, he helps me to release the power. He helps me to flow in the power. He helps me to manifest the power. The scripture we read here said, Christ, the power of God. So if Christ is in you, the power is in you. If Christ is in you, the power of God is in you. If Christ is in you, you have what it takes to manifest the power. But what we really need right now is to begin to walk in the revelation of this power. And how do we walk in the revelation of the power of God? It, number one, we need to recognize that we have the power. We need to recognize that we have the power. We need to recognize that we have the power of God. You know, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus was sharing and he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus was walking in the consciousness of the power. If we're not conscious of the power of God, we cannot release the power. There is a release of power because there is first a consciousness of the power. So the consciousness of the power leads to the manifestation of the power. So we can't truly release the power of God without first being uh, uh, walking in the understanding that we're carrying the power of God. This is why if you look at Luke chapter 4, Jesus was sharing, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. He was conscious of this anointing. The anointing is an expression of the power. The anointing is a manifestation of God's power. The anointing is the power of God at work. The anointing is also, well, I say, I want to put it this way, it is an aspect of the power. Because when, you, when it comes to the power of God, it's not limited only to the anointing. Wisdom also is an expression of the power of God. Revelation knowledge is also an expression of the power of God. The glory is also an expression of the power of God. The blessing also is an expression of the power of God. There are dimensions of God's power. So when we talk about the power of God, it's not limited only to the anointing. There is more to the power of God than what we know about the power of God. The power of God is far beyond our human definition. It's far beyond what we can get from the Hebrew, from the Greek. All of those things gives us pictures and insights, but it does not give us the totality of what it is because God is more than what we can define. God is more than who we can define. We cannot define God. We can't define God. This is why the scripture said he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So we can't define God. We can say he's our Father, beautiful. We can say he's Almighty God, beautiful. We can say he's the King of Kings, beautiful. We can say he's El Shaddai, beautiful. But that is not the totality of who he is. He is more than what we know about him. And as we walk in the light of his word, he keeps giving us the revelation of who he is in different dimensions as we can walk in the confidence, they can open the door for greater possibilities. So here we already said, but unto them which are called both the Jews and the Greek, unto those who are called both the Jews and the Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, we are in the days of his power. We are in the days of miracle signs and wonder. The days of miracle signs and wonder did not end with the early apostles of Jesus. No, there is a continuation of the miracles because there is a continuation of the ministry of the Spirit of God. 
There is a continuation of miracle healing signs and wonders because there is a continuation of the ministry of the Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is here. If He's here, that means there is availability of power. There is a presence of power of God in this earth today that in Christ Jesus we can manifest the power. So the days of miracle, power, signs and wonders did not end with the early apostle. It didn't. It did not end with the early apostles. There was a continuation of God's power and for we to experience the continuation of the power, we need to unlock the revelation of the power. This is why you need the revelation of God's word. Paul was praying in Ephesians, he said that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because without revelation knowledge, you cannot release the power of God. Without revelation knowledge, you cannot walk in the conviction of the power. So this is why we need revelation of his will as we can release the power of God. You are carrying the power, he takes the knowledge of his will to release the power. You are carrying the power. The day you got born again was the day you are powerful. I said the day you got born again was the day you are powerful. The day you got born again was the day you are made righteous. That was the day you became holy. The day you got born again was the day you are holy, was the day you became righteous, and God is expecting you to continue in the revelation of your righteousness. He's expecting you to continue in the revelation of your holiness. When we continue in the revelation of our righteousness and holiness, it leads to the application of holiness. Because we can apply holiness to situations. If you look at the life of this guy called Joseph in the scripture, when the wife of Potiphar called him and said, I want to have a sexual relationship with you. He said, how can I commit this great sin against my God? What was Joseph doing? He was applying his holiness to the situation. He was walking out his salvation with fear and tremble. He was walking it out. He was applying holiness to the situation. He was applying his holiness. The Bible talks about abstain from every appearance of evil. Abstain from every appearance of evil because there are things, if we don't abstain from them, they can pollute our spirit, man. They can pollute us emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and they can even go to an extent of affecting the body. So it is important that you begin to understand that you are carrying the power of God. You can heal the sick. You can heal the sick. You can lay hands on the blind and the eyes open. You need to begin to walk in the consciousness of who you are in Christ. You need to walk in the revelation of what you have in Christ. In Christ Jesus, we have dominion. In Christ Jesus, we have authority. In Christ Jesus, we have power. In Christ Jesus, we have victory. So you need to walk in the consciousness that I am carrying the power of God. So when you want to pray for someone, the next time you want to pray for someone, tell them, I'm carrying the power of God. And as I pray for you, you're going to be healed. As I pray for you, you're going to be healed this morning. I received a text message from someone in Uganda. And he was asking me, Apostle, how do I release the power of God? How do I release the anointing? The first thing I, I said to the fellow was, you need to walk in the consciousness of the power of God. If you're not conscious that you are anointed, if you're not conscious that you are anointed, you cannot flow in the power. You can only flow in the power when you're conscious that I am anointed. Because I'm anointed, I'm going to release the power today. Because I'm anointed, if I lay my hands on the sick, they will recover. If we are not walking in the revelation of who we are, we cannot function in dominion. You need to be conscious that you're powerful. This is the kind of mindset that projects victory. This is the kind of mindset that brings us into a lifestyle of dominion. This is the kind of mindset that helps you to, to manifest the glory of God in any situation. You are anointed, you are powerful, and you are loaded with the wisdom of God. You know, a lot of people are asking God to do for them what he has already done through Christ Jesus for them. They are asking God, oh God, give me your power. Oh God, give me your power. How can you say to God, give me your power? When Christ dwells in you and the scripture says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. How can you say, oh God, give me your power. Oh God, give me your power. When the scripture said, here it said, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So if Christ is in me, I have the power. How can I pray, oh God, give me your anointing. Oh God, when the scripture said, the anointing which you receive abided in you. 
You see, what we need to understand is that most things we ask for, we have it already. But what we, need, we really needed to ask for was the revelation of how to walk in those things that we have already in Christ Jesus. Most things we're asking God for, we have them already. We have the anointing already. We have the healing power of God already. We have the glory already. The question right now is how do I bring them out? How do I bring them into manifestation? This is where loyalty to the principles of the scripture is important. Your loyalty to the principles of the scriptures is strategic for releasing the power of God. We cannot truly release the power of God if we are not loyal to biblical principles. There is a principle of obedience. There is a principle of responding to the ministry of the Spirit, walking in the consciousness of the person of the Holy Ghost. And being conscious of the Spirit of God will lead to greater manifestation. Being conscious of the Holy Ghost, that you are conscious of the presence of the Spirit of God, that because I'm anointed, because I got the Spirit of God in my life, miracles are going to happen. Most things we pray about, we have already. But what we should begin to pray about is to have the revelation to release, to unlock what we already have in Christ Jesus. That was why Paul was praying in Ephesians 1 verse 17. He said that God will grant you that the God of that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Because you need the spirit of wisdom to download load the things of the spirit you need revelation knowledge to unlock the things of the spirit so with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him you will know how to deploy the power you will know how to apply the power of god in any situation because you need revelation to flow in the power you need revelation to flow in the power. The power of God is available, you know, in Luke chapter 5, verse 17. In Luke 5, 17, when Jesus was teaching, the Bible said that the power of God was present to heal the sick. The power of God was present to heal the sick. The power was present to heal the sick. In Luke 5, 17, as Jesus was teaching, because the word of God is called an anointed word, whenever God's word is going forth, it is the ability of God that is going forth to people. And if they understand that the word of God is the ability of God, and they take advantage of it, they will do miracles. They will do signs and wonders. They will see the miraculous. They will see supernatural release, because whenever God's word is spoken, there is a release of his power. Now, the scripture also established in Psalm 107 verse 20. In Psalm 107 verse 20 said, he sent forth his word. His word healed them. That simply means the word contains the healing ability. The word contains the energy of the spirit. When the word of God was released into the atmosphere, it was the presence of God in operation. It was the presence of God. So when people are hearing the word of God, it's not only words that is coming to them, also the presence of God is coming into their life. The presence of God is also coming to the light because Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. So whenever we're speaking God's word, we're releasing the spirit into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So we have the power. From this day forward, don't be afraid of demons. Don't be afraid of witchcraft. Don't be afraid of anything because you are carrying the power of God. You are a power carrier. You are carrying the power of God. The power of God is in operation in your life. You are not powerless. So don't talk like someone that is powerless. You are not powerless. You are carrying the power. There is ability of the spirit in you. There is the energy of the spirit in you. You can do great things. You can do great miracles. You can lay your hands on the sick that will recover. In fact, John 4 verse 4 said, Greater is he that is in us than what is in the world. Greater is he that is in us than what is in the world. The greater one lives in our inside. The greater one lives in our inside. He said, Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. So it doesn't matter what is going on in the world right now. The greater one lives in you. This is why you're far from death. You're far from sickness and disease because the greater one lives in you. You must learn to practice the presence of God. And how do we practice the presence of God? By being conscious of the Christ in us. By reading the word of God. By praying in the Holy Ghost. By listening to the Spirit of God. We are practicing the presence of God.
By applying the word of God to every situation is an indication that we are practicing the presence of the Father God. And someone is watching this broadcast today, and the Spirit of God is saying, Listen, you've got the power of God. The power of God is already inside of you. You need to be conscious of this very fact that wherever I move, the power is in me. Wherever I go, there is the power of God. I'm carrying the power. And because I'm carrying the power, I'm going to see miracles. I'm going to see healing. I'm going to see signs and wonders. I'm going to see deliverance because I'm a power carrier. You need to say that to yourself. Because the reason why you have to say that to yourself because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It comes by hearing. So if I keep hearing the word of God, faith to release the power. If I keep telling myself, you, I am anointed, I am walking in the glory of God, the faith to release the anointing is, will be in operation. So whatever you consistently say will determine what you're going to manifest. Your dominant thought, you got to think in this direction, I'm anointed. And because I'm anointed, doors open for me because i'm anointed all things work together for my good because of my i'm anointed my dreams are coming to pass because i am anointed i'm seeing supernatural release i'm seeing supernatural open door because i'm anointed you see when you walk in the consciousness of the anointing it will be easy to flow in the anointing this is so important. You got to talk to yourself. You got to let yourself know, I'm anointed. If you're born again, you're anointed. And because you're anointed, nothing can be impossible to you. If you are born again, you are an anointed personality. This is the kind of mentality to go at with. This is the kind of mentality to use to approach your day, to live your life, that I am carrying the power of God. When you meet someone that is sick, you tell them, I'm carrying the power of God. If I pray for you, you're going to be healed right now. The power of God. you got to exercise your faith. The Bible said in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it said, He that cometh to God must believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He that cometh to God. So if I come to God, i got to believe. Because my believing will lead to the manifestation of greater things of the Spirit. My believing will lead to manifestation of greater things of the spirit. So faith walketh by love. Faith walketh by love. So as you begin to trust God, as you begin, to, one of the ways you release the power of God is through words. I said one of the ways you release the power of God is when you speak the word of God. This is one of the ways you release the anointing. This is one of the ways you release the power. This is why everyone that Jesus healed. Majority of them, he spoke to them. Receive your sight. He spoke to them. You are made whole. He spoke to them. Majority of the people that God healed, Jesus spoke to them. So you release the power by speaking the word. This is how you release the power. You release the power by speaking the word. A lot of people are saying, I want to see the power of God. I want to see the power of God. It's so simple. If you speak the word of God by faith, you are releasing the power of God. How does God walk? He walks by his word. He said he will magnify his word above his name. God walks by his word. In Genesis 1 verse 2, he said, in Genesis 1 verse 2, he said, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the waters. In Genesis 1 verse 3, and God said, let there be light. When God spoke, a divine ability was released, and there was an establishment of light. Light was being established, because everything God wants to see, he speaks it into existence. This is why the scripture said, where the word of the king is, there is power. The word of the king is what produces the power, the word. So whenever the word is going for, the power is going for it. In Mark chapter 11, that was why Jesus taught in Mark 11. He said, if you can say to this mountain, be that removed and that not in your heart, he said, you will have whatsoever, whatsoever you say. You know why? Because the word is what releases the power. So we release the power of God through the word of God. We release the power of God through the word of God. If you want somebody to be healed, you got to speak it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We have to speak. If you don't speak, nothing will move. If you can say to this mountain, 
in Hebrew, sorry, sorry, in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 18, a line there where he said, He called those things that be not as though they were. In Isaiah, he said, declaring the end from the beginning, declaring, declaring the end from the beginning. So if you don't speak it, you can't see the release. So the power of God is being released through words. This is how you release the power of God. This is how you manifest the power of God when you begin to speak. You are releasing. This is why we talk about the integrity of God's word. The integrity of God's word. It means the word of God cannot fail. It means the word of God cannot fail. And because his word cannot fail, I can absolutely trust in his word, believe his word, allow his word to determine my way of thinking, my action, my conversation, and my lifestyle. Releasing the power of God by speaking the word of God. This is how you release the power. You're believing God to come out from death. You begin to declare, I am death free in the name of Jesus. I am death free in the name of Jesus. I am death free. You know what you're doing? You're releasing the power of God that will break that yoke. Maybe you're believing God to pay off your mortgage. Father, in the name of Jesus, this mortgage is paid off. You said you will give me houses I did not build. You begin to release the power through the word. This is how you release the power. And most people that Jesus healed, he spoke the word of God to them. And when God's word is spoken, miracles happen, healings happen, signs and wonders happen. There is a supernatural release whenever God's word is spoken by faith. Do you want to see miracles? Do you want to see healing? Do you want to see signs and wonders? Then it's time to speak the word of God with an authority and an expectation that when I speak, something is going to happen. Healing is going to happen. Deliverance is going to happen. If I speak the word, someone will be restored. There is divine energy in the word of God. This is why the scripture said in Hebrews chapter 4, it, it said something in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it said the word of God is quick. It said it's powerful. It said sharper than two x word. The word of God is quick. It is powerful. So how do we know it's powerful? It's when we speak it with an expectation that it will come to pass. The scripture said in Isaiah, said, my word will not return back void to me. It will accomplish the purpose which it was sent into. Whatever it, uh, the word was sent to do, the word is going to accomplish it. The word will not return back void. That simply means the word accomplishes things. The word of God accomplishes things. The ability of God is in the word of God. The power of God is in the word of God. So when we speak God's word, we are releasing the power of God. This is how you release the power of God. This is how you release the power of God. This is how you flow in the anointing by speaking the word. As we pray in the spirit, as we pray in tongue, as we pray in the Holy Ghost, as we pray in the spirit, we're getting our spirit man ready to speak the word. We're getting our spirit man ready to speak the word as we pray in the spirit in Jude 1 verse 20. In Jude 1 verse 20, it says, building up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are getting yourself ready for supernatural release. This is how you change situation. Every circumstances before you is subject to change. Whether it's a legal issue, marital issue, financial issue, children issue, whatever the problem is, the power to change it is in words. If you speak the word of God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this yoke to be broken and you believe by faith, you're going to see miracles. Miracles happen in the atmosphere of faith. I said miracles happen in the atmosphere of faith. Wherever there is faith, there is a release of the miraculous. Wherever there is faith, there is a release of the miraculous. So if we want to see the miraculous, our faith must be in operation. In Hebrews 11 verse 6, it said, He that cometh to God must believe there is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I want to show you a scripture before I round up in Psalm 110. In Psalm 110, I'd like us to read. Or uh, from verse 1, Psalm 110 from verse 1, it said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou, sit thou at the right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send that the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. You see, we are called to rule. 
in the mix of our enemies. He said, rule down in the mix of your enemies. So, if there are people who feel like they don't want to see you, they want to come against you, the word of God said, rule in the mix of your enemies. Psalm 110 verse 2. Rule in the mix. You rule. You are, in Psalm 23, you said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He went forward to said, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So, the scripture is telling us right here in Psalm 110, verse 2, verse 2 said, The Lord will send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. The rod, the, the, the rod in this dispensation is likened to the word of God. The rod, the rod is saying, To rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. To rule, to rule in the midst of your enemies. To rule in their midst, to subdue, to conquer. To take the lead, to take the charge, because you have the revelation of who Jesus is in you. You have the revelation of what you can do with the Christ in you. In the midst of the situation, in the midst of the circumstances, we can speak victory. We can speak dominion. We can speak rest. In the midst of circumstances, there is someone watching this broadcast right now, and the Spirit of God is saying, it's time to speak the power of God. It's time to release the word of God into the atmosphere. It's time to speak to your womb. It's time to speak to your marriage. It's time to speak to your babies. It's time to speak to your children. It's time to decree with an expectation that you're releasing the power into the atmosphere that will cause the desired change you long for. Verse 3 said, Thy people, Psalm 110, verse 3, in Psalm 110, verse 3, it said, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of thy holiness. He said, The people will be willing in the day of his power. This is the day of his power, the day of the Spirit. This is the day of the Holy Spirit. And because we're in the days of the Holy Spirit, we're going to see more and more manifestation as we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, as we yield ourselves to the visions of God. Great and mighty things will be happening. If you are watching this broadcast right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the power of God is in this atmosphere to break every chain, to break every yoke. You can be set free right now. You want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to show you what to do. Hallelujah. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. On YouTube, is Faith Man Teacher. We'll have a lot of revelation, a lot of information that the Holy Ghost have given to us to share with the body of Christ and the world at large. So, go to YouTube on Faith Man Teaching and subscribe. You have so much insight to unlock by watching just one video, and your whole dream can move to another dimension. So, go to Faithman Teaching on YouTube and stay connected. And also, you can keep watching me on FinishWorkTV.com. FinishWorkTV.com is 24-7. Every day, you can watch it. Wherever you are in the world, you can watch FinishWorkTV.com. Today, I'm encouraging people to consider partnering with this ministry. Partnership is strategic when it comes to fulfilling a vision or a dream that God has given. So, you can partner with us today. You can Send a love gift and offering. You can serve Pastor Fitman. I want to stand with you. I want to support you in what you're doing as you can spread this message to more people around the world. So you can do that on PayPal. On PayPal is teaching at gmail.com. Thank you for your partnership and your love and support. We're praying for all our partners and everyone partnering with us. This is your season to reap greater harvest. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon you. And keep you in the name of Jesus. You can also send us friends requests on Faithman Obweather on Facebook or Faithman Obweather Ministry on Facebook. When you go to Facebook, you can connect with Faithman Obweather Ministry or Faithman Obweather on Facebook. When you connect with us, you'll be able to watch most of our teachings and other posts that we send out almost every week to help people receive God's word. We love you until our next broadcast. Don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you.